Hello everyone, welcome to another Out of Spec video. I'm Max, I'm joined by my colleague Ryan who's filming me today. And today we wanna to showcase to you something really cool that was sent to us from Zenjur. This is the Superbase V6400. It is basically a super powerful, uh, roughly over six kilowatt hour battery pack that you can pack in your EV or your gas vehicle, no requirement, take on your camping adventures and fuel a mobile workstation lifestyle or off-grid adventure, whatever you have as well as power it with, also made by Zenger, a really cool fold-out solar array with this one providing 400 watts. You can combine these, stack these batteries with a cable that connects them together and uh, just create crazy amounts of off-grid power uh, energy that you can use for anything you want. So let's get into all the nerdy details. What is this battery back? Well, it's really cool. It's kind of honestly more than just a store of energy. It's actually almost like a smart appliance that you can bring with you off the grid. Zenjur makes an app you can use for a lot of their products they make, including this one, and you can actually control it remotely. So this thing, I will be honest, weighs a lot. It's like, I think over a hundred pounds well over. So with all that energy, uh, carrying it around can be tough. And when you need to get it, you know, into let's say a hatch, it's tough. However, I think a lot of people using these will have low uh, ground clearance vans, maybe ramps, cause you're moving other heavy duty equipment, in which case these rollable wheels will make a lot of sense. And you might notice these back ones are actually powered. So so uh, despite this being out of spec, I can't give you the exact nerdy details of what's powering this, but it's a motor that does get it moving. And it's kind of cool that you can just control that through the app, at least roll it along the floor. Uh, of course, you always have the option to use a handle here, pick it up and drag it. Um, that's another option. So Kyle has shown this unit before in an earlier out of spec reviews video, but Today, we kind of wanted to show you the whole ecosystem because using it with this solar panel, I think really shows the brilliance of a solution like this. So you're in Colorado, you're in California, wherever, US or somewhere around the world, you're off the grid. You need a lot of power. Like you might be like me where you're a video editor and you're rendering video on your laptop and um, the demands of, you know, uh, of it are too high for frankly something like this. A lot of people love these portable battery packs. This is actually bigger than most. People bring these on planes with them to charge their phones and this one can actually charge my laptop, but it can only charge my laptop to like an extra 70%. So I get 170% total capacity. With a unit like this, which gives about 6.4 kilowatt hours, uh, it has that of energy, uh, I can power my laptop 5,000% and that's being generous, accounting for plenty of charging losses, probably realistically much more than that. But with a unit like this, it's so big, I wouldn't just be using it to power a laptop. I could even power my car with it, basically a mobile charger that they make. This is a 32 amp unit, so this could charge a car like let's say my Polestar right now. Right now it's actually at a fairly decent state of charge, so I don't need it. But if we were really off grid, it'd be a super useful thing to have. And the really cool thing is you might see from the setup here, they provide this mobile charger. You don't have to use that. This thing does actually have a NEMA, uh, I believe this is a 650, uh, but it adapts to a 1450 with this basically adapter we have here that we can use to plug that in. So you can monkey with adapters and honestly plug in whatever you want here. So if um, Ryan comes in here, you can see that we're provided with two USB-A ports, one of those for data. So I think you can firmware update this thing. It's a smart device, basically, super nice. You can turn on some LEDs for party mode, super cool, love that. Uh, Cause let's be honest, you could throw an outdoor party single-handedly with this, with all the power options it provides you. We have, I believe it's the 650, um, the, the uh, prong there. We have another one that can provide 240 volt power. This is all AC and we have way more AC out options here with four uh, 120 volt outlets, all able to provide 15 amps. That's really neat. Then in the middle here for our devices, like my laptop, we're charging it with power delivery over USB-C, 100 watts on both of these. These are 20 watts. So these you'd use for laptops, bigger devices, maybe Nintendo Switch. These you'd use for like a phone or some, something like that. Of course, I brought my bricks. So while these ports can only provide 100 watts, if I wanted a full 140 watts, I could just plug in my laptop to the brick and use one of these. We've got plenty. Uh, and all of a sudden you can see on the unit, whoa, it's giving the juice to my laptop over 100 watts as it asks for it. Really neat. 
you can also see we're getting input. That input is coming by virtue of the solar panel. Now you might be saying, oh, only 40 watts. Well, to be honest, I'm surprised we're even getting 40 watts because if you look out today, cloudy, it's pretty gray in Colorado. So these solar panels are not exactly operating at their ideal conditions. But if you were able to mount these in a south facing direction somewhere with a clear view of the sky and you had a sunny day, theoretically, you're getting somewhere close to 400 watts with this array. And the really cool thing about this array is if you come around, you can see that it is a uh, stood on these honestly i was really impressed well built i don't know what it, this is canvas i'm not a materials engineer but some really nice material that just folds out here really nice straps that tighten everything down and then this unit just will put in a picture where it folds down to it folds down to honestly be super compact and be very carryable of course with the battery that's a lot heavier but the battery and solar panel once you know they're packed up I fit them in the you know hatch of my Polestar, no issue. So that I think is super awesome. And we're talking about my Polestar too. If you're living an off-grid lifestyle, you might have an even larger vehicle like an R1S or an EQS SUV or a Sprinter that's maybe diesel. Whatever you have, this provides you electrical options. If it's an EV, then hey, this is almost, you can think of it like a Jerry can. This is not gonna be ideal to charge those big high loads, um, especially with only really able being able to provide like 32 amps we're not talking about fast level two charging or even a lot of it because energy density of batteries this is pushing the limit but what it's providing you is you know maybe just a little bit in an emergency if you need it i think it's a cool flexible option and later in this video we're actually going to go to a charge one station and try to charge this with level two because it will by use of an adapter take in input uh from J1772 and it adapts it. Interestingly enough, this uses type two CCS connectors just without the DC pins. But um, yeah, you put that into the unit, plug in a J1772, and we should be able to charge this anywhere we would charge an EV. So I think that's really neat. Uh, and honestly, whether you're living that full EV lifestyle or you want to electrify your lifestyle, you have a lot of appliances, things you might use, I think this could be a really interesting option. One more thing I want to get into. See this panel here? We actually have some DC output options. So these aren't exactly high power. You're not going to be running your own EA uh, Electro America station out of this. But what you can do is, well, have a few of these very common kind of barrel input, uh, sorry, outputs for charging DC devices as well you have an ethernet so I don't know too much about this but my hunch is you could use this I think power over ethernet so this might be an interesting use case to power something like a Starlink I don't know that I'm just guessing off the top of my head but honestly if you have the right adapters and creativity I really doubt there's much you couldn't do with a unit like this with what it's giving you you also have buttons here basically providing you we've shown you led the wi-fi control through the app and then around the other side you can see how ryan and i have set up the solar array so it just plugged in i believe these are stand this is a standard kind of dc input so you could use any solar panels but i really like how well built this um this one is it was really easy for us to get it set up and uh you have more ac input options for charging as well um, so super flexible, love to see that. Then they have what they call a Zen charge. So that's what we're gonna show you later in this video at a charge point station or anywhere that would give us basically um, access to level two, 240 volt AC infrastructure, which is a lot of places. So super flexible, whether you're at the RV campsite, even more off grid in the back country, if you have the means to get your vehicle and something like this and this all out there, I think you could live honestly a really modern lifestyle, one that might make you even question, are you outside in the first place? I don't know, that's for you to decide, but you could power really whatever you want with this. Gives you a lot of peace of mind and really just capability. I'm impressed with it. Um, if I had the space and need for something like this, I think I'd be carrying it with me a lot, but I hope you're all interested in that. Um, let's see what it looks like when I actually plug it in to charge it. But that's been kind of an overview of how we might set this up at a campsite or just somewhere out here, like in the beautiful hills of Colorado. One more thing I wanted to tie in here. Uh, my a colleague filming behind the camera, Ryan, mentioned that if you were an overlander, if you were someone who kind of, you know, was using a diesel or a gas generator, this is a really interesting honestly by comparison not heavyweight solution that makes no noise is much less intrusive i think blends in much better with any environment it's in than let's be honest carrying fuel diesel a generator that's a lot and so this is giving you 
legitimately the kind of output you would get from one of those portable quote unquote generator units, but it's doing it the electric way. And I think that's just really neat. Um, it's probably more efficient stream to stream. Of course, you have to account for losses everywhere in the system, but I do think when you have power that's coming that way, as opposed to burning fuel, environmentally, I would argue that's better. And then just the appearances and the noise pollution aspect, I think for a lot of campsites would be something that's super relevant. Uh, Ryan, since you're filming, is there anything else you think that's kind of worth mentioning about how a setup like this might be used? Yeah, I think you bring up a great point about how this could replace a generator. One aspect that we talked about a little bit with Alyssa and Kyle was with their Sprinter van, they have an AC, but in order to run that all night, they have to run their generator. So yeah. they choose between AC or sleeping with some noise from the generator. Yeah. This can totally avoid that completely. Yeah. Another point that you brought up was uh, the possibility of using this to top up your vehicle. Definitely totally an option. And if you're in a pinch, you can do it. I don't think it's the best option. I think you're only going to get a handful of miles from the entire battery. So... I think it's a great option, perhaps not the best option as a range extender. Though. Yeah, don't think of it as a range extender. I kind of like my analogy, of it. it's like a jerry can, uh, but like really you're getting like even less than a gallon of fuel in terms of energy capacity, just because batteries, again, it's hard to make them super energy dense. Nonetheless, at 6.4 kilowatt hours of stored energy, that's a lot of potential. And you can output it quickly too. I mean, you can output well, uh, you can charge this. We're gonna mention that once we charge it, but I think I believe like over three kilowatts, really good onboard AC charger. And then of course, right, we could do 400 watts from this panel, and we might even be able to get a bigger array and charge with a larger DC input as well. So super flexible in all those regards and I kind of like that as a solution. Price-wise we're looking at about $6,700 for this unit as of us filming this. You can buy it using our link in the description and then for the solar panels it's $1,200. So while that might seem like a lot you do have to consider the generators, heavy-duty equipment, all kinds of things you might use in an overlanding lifestyle are honestly very expensive. I mean Kyle and Alyssa know that all too well from their escapades in the Sprinter. Even maintaining that vehicle is a lot. So getting a flexible solution like this that might let you use AC all night, might let you power a really great compressor for you know the biggest mattress of all time, a bouncy castle. Honestly there's so many things you could do with this and I just adore that flexibility. So that's why I think this is a good, worthwhile option to look out for. Not the cheapest, admittedly, but zero emissions, and it's very quiet. Makes no noise at all that I can hear. All right, so we are here at Ojal Brewing Company. Um, great place in Fort Collins, by the way, and we're just using their nice uh, provided charging here because not only, of course, can I charge my car, supposedly this Zendur takes that AC input by virtue of the CCS Type 2 connector, of course, being a Chinese slash you know, European product, other continent, that's what's more normal for them. Luckily, they include an adapter for us. So uh, we will find that adapter here. Looks like this. And uh, I assume you could also adapt this to other kinds of receptacles for AC input as well. Um, you can, of course, use these. This is not gonna give you as much power. 15 amp limited there. Um, let's see, well, 15 amps, 240 volts. I'll do some math. Ryan, do you know what that is? Uh, yeah, it's just about three kilowatts. Okay, so that is the, actually, you could do that too. But we're gonna do it here, cause you know, EV charging lifestyle, you could just charge it along with your car. So my car is already plugged in. Looks like it's charging successfully, getting 30 amps. I'm guessing this unit looks pretty small. Probably load sharing. Well, hopefully both of these get 15 amps and we're gonna max this out still. So <laughs> I think it'd be hilarious, honestly, if you pulled up to a charge point I don't know what it is in the terms of use. Can you occupy a parking space with this? I probably wouldn't, but hey, I, right now no one's here, so this is hilarious. Um, and if we plug it in, uh, we can look in the front of the unit. It's gonna take, I think, a second to initialize. Looks like it's about to start a charge. I just heard something click. Contactors are loaded. And hopefully, yeah, oh man, straight to, uh, Let's get see if we can get to 3.2 or 3.6. It might not make it that way since it's already at 96%. Yeah, this is uh, we're committing the EV charging sin of having a high state of charge. And this battery chemistry is, I believe, some kind of lithium ion. Uh, I think it's semi-solid state. So this actually should be really interesting. I mean, this unit's super well built. I expect it's going to be honestly... No, no guarantees, I'm not an engineer, but it seems like one of the safer options you could have for a large amount of portable lithium storage uh, for electrons. 
So um, looks like that's probably all we're gonna get today. I don't think that's a limitation of the charger or the input. I do believe them that it gets 3.6. It's just where the stupidly high state of charge. So I guess, Ryan, we gotta throw some more parties, get this guy lower. But that's pretty cool that this can do all that. And um, thank you so much for watching. Um, Zender unit, you can order it using our Amazon link in the description, as well as what I think is really cool as well, that foldable solar panel. I mean, look at how small this is, 400 watts. Granted, it's heavier than you think it would be, but hey, a lot of photovoltaic cells in there, super cool technology. So Zinger, feel free to order it from our link in the description. Really cool off-grid solutions, and I'm glad we were able to cover it.